Good morning, everybody, and welcome. I'm Tammy, your host today. We're happy to have you here. So the holidays are coming, so we are going to talk about holiday recipes today, plant-based, oil-free holiday recipes. So when I look back and think about my first plant-based holiday season, I remember that I was like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna make? I went plant-based in the spring that year, and then all of a sudden it seemed like the holidays were upon us and I had no idea how to put on a holiday meal that was whole food plant-based oil free so I knew I wasn't going to make my old traditional recipes but I had no idea what it was going to look like without them and so that's why I wanted to do this show today so so whether you've been plant-based for or you're brand new to it I hope that you will learn something today and I welcome your sharing also in the chat feed um, and if you have questions feel free to ask questions so the first part um, of today's show I'm going to show you some pictures and talk to you about the recipes that my family has been enjoying for holidays and then the back half I'm going to talk about strategies so what do you do if you are um, having people over that follow the standard American diet what if you're going to someone's home who follows the standard American diet what do you do how do you still make healthy choices so we're gonna um, cover all of that I'll have hints and tips for you and of course um, we have a lot of recipes on our blog at nutmegnotebook.com as well as um, on YouTube. So um, if you want to ask us a question in the chat, preface it with three question marks and end with three question marks. That just helps um, the questions pop out to my husband, Tom, who's here. Are you going to say hi, Tom? Say hi, buddy. Hello, everybody. I'm over here getting <laughs> Tammy's words uh, synced up with her lips on my little video controller. So, wow, be... it's every husband's dream to control the volume and what comes out of her wife's mouth. Well, I'm just trying to get the sequence for just you. Just the sequence, okay. Yeah. So good enough. Yeah, just give me a Peter Piper pick so I can check out those peas. Peter Piper pick. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> okay. So I think we have Jesse and, oh, Tom, I need you to bring it up on here for me too. I think we have Jesse and Tiffany moderating for us in the chat today. Thank you ladies for being here. We always appreciate your help. So um, we have a blog post at nutmegnotebook.com that is called Plant-Based Holiday Recipe Roundup. And um, if you just Google that or just go to the blog and put in plant-based holiday recipe roundup, then um, that blog post will show up and the recipes and ideas that I'm going to talk to you about today can be found in that blog post. That Actually, you'll find the links. So it's a blog post that I made last year. I have updated it. And last year I came out with a whole bunch of um, new recipes and um, did a whole Thanksgiving um, YouTube video. So you can also find that in our um, YouTube library. And like I made everything a week or so in advance and then showed it all to you guys in that video. And so um, I made it before the video. I didn't make it through during the video. It would have like taken too long. So um, just remember that you don't have to make everything the day of. You can do a lot of prep in advance and that is also very, very helpful. You can go ahead now and practice some recipes, try them out and see if you like them. And many things can be made ahead and frozen. So, you know, you can make um, muffins and cookies and um, waffles and pancakes and I have a breakfast sausage recipe. That's actually, I don't think that's in that blog post. But if you just Google um, breakfast sausages, nutmeg notebook, you'll find that recipe. All of that kind of stuff can be made ahead of time. So if you're going to be having guests staying with you um, for the holidays, then, you know, um, you can go ahead and make things in advance so it's not so crazy um, when you have people there. 
and so many things freeze really well so soups chilies anything you know really with lentils all of that stuff freezes really well if you do um, smoothies for your breakfast you can go ahead and make up um, smoothie bags and you know put ingredients in those ready to go just so that it's not so hectic um, when the holiday rolls around or that weekend or that week when you're going to have a lot of company so oh jesse posted a direct link to the recipe roundup thank you jesse it, it, it's in the show notes too and it's in the show notes as well which is also mm -hmm. great so if you're ready tom we could start showing pictures and um, talking and I put them in the ATEM in an order so if you just start with the first one okay that would be great so um, remember that also you guys that the holidays aren't just about the food right it's about getting together and being with your family or your friends um, and um, friends are just the relatives that we choose for ourselves so um, that can also be really fun just to get together with your friends it's about the togetherness everybody being together it doesn't have to be all about the food um, although I know for a lot of people that it really is so um, if you know what you're gonna make um, please put it in the chat and share with everybody what you've already decided that you're gonna make for the holidays because people are already emailing me, leaving me messages on Instagram and Facebook asking me what to make for the holidays. So Tom is gonna put a picture up for us. So um, this is um, a breakfast for a holiday morning this happened to be i think that was actually for a mother's day because it was outside but those are my breakfast sausages there and then just some pancakes some waffles you can make hash browns um one of my very favorite breakfast i will tell you comes because i don't normally eat breakfast but on holidays i will i love uh, the sheet pan uh, tofu scramble and potatoes from well your world so we love Reeves and Dylan from Well Your World. If you go to the Well Your World site, their website, and click on, they have free downloads. And there is a five-day meal planner. And the sheet pan tofu scramble and potatoes is in that free download. Is this the right slide? Yeah, this is the right slide. And so, um, and it's easy. And if you're feeding a group, that's the way to go because it makes a ton it all goes in the oven at the same time and it's super easy prep so i don't have pancake or waffle recipe on my blog yet um but i will i'm i've made a pumpkin one that's really really good i just haven't gotten around to posting anything yet so okay next slide so in breakfast also you guys you can you know set up a oatmeal bar you can set up avocado toast bar um, you know you can make toast for people and put different things out that they can put on their toast you can make pancakes you can make waffles you know we recently went to the coast for the weekend and I made um, like a triple batch of pancakes and froze them ahead my daughter made a triple batch of waffles and froze them ahead and we took those with us but you could also do that before you're having people over for the holidays i like to do brunch i think brunch is a really fun thing to do one year for christmas on christmas day we did a brunch and then we all drove up to the mountains and went sledding and it was so much fun and so and it was so easy tofu scramble hash browns and pancakes and i made like my um chia jam the uh, fruit chia jam berry chia jam i think it's called on the blog and we just had brunch and then went and played the rest of the day in the snow and it was so much fun so also you can break traditions you don't have to do everything exactly the way you've always done it um you know switch things up and we like to interject some kind of physical activity into our day if the weather will allow for it um, so we love to you know take everybody on a beautiful nature walk or you know at least through the neighborhood go do something 
um, that's physical and active, play games in the backyard, play games at the table, you know, so that you're not just sitting around and eating all day. Okay, so this next one, you already have it up? Oh, there was, there, there was oh, some, a question? Yeah, there was some question on the last one. Um, okay. The tablecloth in this one, where, is that something oh. from a yeah. historic collection? It is, it was one of my grandma's. So I have some um, vintage. Tiffany says she thinks it looks like it's from the 40s or 50s. Yes, absolutely. I have some vintage tablecloths um, from my um, my grandma and her oh, sister. Oh, I'm doing the wrong thing here. I need, yeah, this tablecloth. There it is. Yeah. I had me on there instead of that beautiful tablecloth. Yeah. Oh, well, you're beautiful too. Um, yes. So I have some vintage tablecloths. They're so much fun. And because um, they belong to two women that... Um, were very prominent in my life. Uh, it's really fun. I love to get them out and use them. So thanks for noticing. There was another that. comment that it looks like a, a setting from a, a from a bed and breakfast. Aw, thanks. Okay, so what? Yeah, that was a that was a Mother's Day brunch yeah. that we had one time. Yeah. So they said, well, that explains the tablecloth. That does explain. That explains the tablecloth, okay, right? So, so because you, this is I'm making this. This is like general. For um, all holidays, a lot of the recipes that we're going to be showing you and talking about, we make for various holidays, not just Thanksgiving or Christmas, but they could be, you know, for um, any any reason, an anniversary, a birthday, Easter, you know, what whatever. So, um, okay, so let's go to the next. Father's one. Day. Father's Day. Grandfather's Day. day <laughs> husband Appreciation Day. My birthday. Mm, lots of lots of yeah, reasons. lots of great holidays. Oh, you're so funny. Okay, next okay. picture. Yeah, next picture. Okay, so some people say, oh, don't just give me recipes, give me a meal plan idea. Okay, so here's one of our favorites. This is actually, I think, what we made last year. It was either last year or the year before. And so, is it up on the screen yet? Hmm? The next one. Oh, after this one? Okay, there we go. Yeah. No, here we go. Yeah, the lentil you, shepherd's yeah, don't pie. Don't look at this. Look at that. This Great. is your monitor up Okay. There. So um, the lentil shepherd's pie, um, that is a family favorite. What's great about it is it has everything in it. So you've got the vegetables, the gravy, and then the mashed potatoes are on top. And um, it can be made in the instant pot, um, the ingredients the filling and then the mashed potatoes. I make both of those in the Instant Pot and then um, pop it in the oven. You can make it ahead if you want. I like it best fresh, um, but you can, you know, assemble it and then wait to bake it. And if you let it sit for, you know, 15 um, minutes or so after you take it out of the oven, then it will plate up beautifully. So um, lentil shepherd's pie, is it's extremely flavorful. I will tell you when I'm making it for people who don't eat salt-free like we do, I do add salt to it. Otherwise, the, the meal is going to taste very flat to them if they're used to having salt in their food. And so I'll add a little bit of salt. I can do that because Tom and I don't have any health conditions you know, so um, a few meals a year that are a little bit higher salt doesn't cause a problem for us. But, you know, that's an individual thing. If you have hypertension, um, have trouble with retaining water, whatever, just make sure you give everybody the salt shaker so that they can add that at the table. Most often times the family still adds some salt to it, even though I've added some when I've cooked it. Then the fruity coleslaw is great. So you can shred your own cabbage if you want. You can buy the, the um, bag where it's already shredded for you. Trader Joe's and Whole Foods and Sprouts sell it that way. Of course, it's more economical to do it yourself, to just buy the heads of cabbage. But hey, if you're short on time, if you have more money than you do time, then splurge and do that. And then I just add whatever seasonal fruit um, is in. So in the fall, I would do apples, the little clementine oranges, and some grapes cut in half. So delicious. Um, what would you use? Maribeth says, what would you use in the shepherd's pie if your family does not care for lentils? I think I wouldn't do the, the shepherd's pie. 
I would, I would make something different for them um, because it has a lot of lentils in it and I don't, off the top of my head, I can't think of anything that I would use in place of the lentils that would still give you that really nice texture. Um, it would also change the amount of liquid um, used for it. So I don't have an alternative for that, for this one. Um, so the fruity coleslaw, everybody loves it. Um, when we've done our weight loss classes in the past, I've made like double, triple batch of it and we never have any left because it just goes. And then the cranberry chutney, that was a family favorite recipe. Oh, what happened? Oh, I thought you were going back to... No, oh. I'm on that one. I'm on that yeah. particular yeah. one. I, yeah. I had taken it off while you were talking. I just oh, put you it did? back on. Oh, we'll keep you, it on so that people can see it. it. The cranberry chutney, that is a family favorite recipe from when we were on the standard American diet. And um, I revamped it. So instead of using brown sugar in it, I'm using dates in it and um, raisins. And it's absolutely delicious, family favorite, and a lot that you can do with that. So you can take that and it goes great with this meal. Um, but you can also, you can stuff a sweet potato with it. You can layer it. I'm gonna show you a pumpkin fall pudding. Um, it's actually made with sweet potatoes, but you can layer it with that pudding and make it into a parfait. It's great on top of um, muffins. So like my quinoa banana oat muffins, really great with um, those. You can put some on top of your nice cream. It's just super versatile and really delicious. And you can also make it as gifts to give people make it up and put it in little jars with a pretty ribbon. And then my apple oak crisp, that was in the um, National Health Science Magazine. Last fall I did, I think six or seven recipes for the um, fall spread that um, for the Health Science Magazine. And um, a couple of the gals that work on the magazine contacted me before the magazine came out and they said, oh my gosh, we've been making your lentil loaf with date glaze and your apple oak crisp. When we saw the recipes, we just had to make them and they're wonderful. We're making them before the magazine even comes out. So, um, so that was very exciting. Our oldest granddaughter absolutely loves the apple oak crisp. So it's really delicious. Uh, Tracy Reese says, what about mushrooms? Yeah, maybe you could use mushrooms instead of lentils in the, um, the pie, but you're gonna have to alter all the other ingredients because the lentils soak up the liquid that's in there and um, you won't get that same effect from mushrooms. Um, I would just find a recipe that's already um, with mushrooms. And there might be one out there. There could be a lentil shepherd's pie, I mean a shepherd's pie, vegan shepherd's pie that is just with that. Um, what do you think about adding salacious to the shepherd's pie? Absolutely, you can use, you can use um, that's from Ellen. You could use any salt substitute. That just happens to be the salt substitute from local spicery um, that many of us have been absolutely loving. But just remember that the, the recipes are like a guideline. They're not hard fast. So you can substitute any salt substitute you want. You can trade out the seasonings if you want to. If you don't have exactly what I have, you can trade those out as well. Okay. Um, Okay, so that would make one meal for me. That would be a holiday meal right there. That's all we would need would be those four things. I don't feel like like I need to make, you know, 10 different things for a holiday meal. I think we oftentimes what happens is because our whole foods are so filling that we will get done with our main meal and nobody wants dessert because we we're just satisfied we're full and so you know a couple hours later we'll pull out dessert and have our dessert and we usually end up just eating that one uh, big meal and a dessert that day yeah Jeanette Kelly says is there a dressing on the coleslaw yes Jeanette there is um, and the recipe you'll find on 
my blog for fruity coleslaw and it's a creamy balsamic that i make with white balsamic and some white beans nobody can ever tell that it has beans in it the beans give it a really creaminess and a smooth texture and the vinegar and the garlic and the seasonings that are in it are really wonderful and um and lots of people serve it to standard american dieters and they are none the wiser um let's see and did you want another look at this shepherd's pie here or are you ready for that um yeah the shep the shepherd's pie is ready for its close-up <laughs> So this is like after it's cooled down, it will plate a lot nicer. And I just wanted to show you like it has a nice thick layer of mashed potatoes. I make my garlic mashed potatoes and it has a nice thick layer of the garlic mashed potatoes on top of it. It also freezes really well. So if you have like the two cup um, super cubes or you have little individual like um, meal size ramekins or little casserole dishes then um, sometimes i'll make it if i'm just making it for tom and i i'll make the whole recipe but i'll take half of it put half of it in an eight inch square casserole dish and then i will make up little individual um, lentil shepherd's pie and freeze it so either in little casserole dishes or in the two cup super cubes and um, it works great and then it's nice you know we can later weeks later we can have a really special yummy meal and i know some people make this kind of food um, weekly we just don't happen to do that we keep um, the more complicated time consuming recipes for more like special occasions otherwise we just eat super simple all the time um, so anyway, that's been a very popular recipe. It's also, I took my um, hearty lentil um, stew recipe and adapted it because I kept thinking, oh, this, I think this would make a really good shepherd's pie. And then um, one of our friends um, told me that she had made it and you know it sets up in the refrigerator and then for thanksgiving she had taken it and turned it into a shepherd's pie and it worked really great so i took that soup stew recipe and adapted it to make this so if you've tried that soup and or stew you you'll one? like it um i wonder if we could substitute the white potato for hannah yam or another sweet potato version absolutely you could and people have told me that they have made the mashed potato topping with sweet potatoes and that would look really pretty and festive and it would taste delicious too so it does have some um i think it has a little bit of sweet potato in the filling so okay next photo and tom you really like that shepherd's pie it's like a, a, a very oh, filling oh, and hearty. Every, everybody in the family does. It's like um, my son and I are both, son-in-law and I are strategic about going back for seconds when, when other people aren't paying attention. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it's just really delicious. Now here's another idea. The, these are little um, lentil loaf muffins and um, those can be really fun because you don't have to cut them and so i just make those in a muffin pan and if you have a silicone muffin pan easy um, to pop them out of a silicone muffin pan you can make them ahead um, when i make these i usually i think it makes 11 or tw almost 12 it makes i think 11 um, just shy of a dozen but um, they freeze really well too so and then we just heat them up in the microwave but um, you could get them all mixed up get them ready to go and then just put them in the oven right before your um, guests are coming or before you're going to be serving your dinner and I, I like them because they stay together they're really delicious and easy to serve up and I would pair them with next slide with the garlic mashed potatoes so um, these are super easy i make them in the instant pot you even mash them in the instant pot couldn't be 
any easier than this. I did read recently that you can peel your potatoes in advance and then put them in a container with cold water and put them in the fridge and they'll be okay um, for up to 48 hours. So it will leach some of the starch out of them. Um, but like if you need to make them, you know, peel them early in the morning and then put them in cold water and put them in the fridge because you're going to cook them a few hours later, that would be perfectly fine. I know it's, you know, so many things, um, have to be made at the last minute. If anything that we can do to save time is a good thing. So, um, these garlic mashed potatoes are fantastic. They've been very, a very popular recipe and super easy to make. And if I have roasted garlic, I will use roasted garlic instead of just throwing the raw garlic in the pot. Okay, next photo. And you could make the fruity coleslaw to go along with that and the cranberry that, you know, you're, we're just changing up what the main thing is. Okay, so this next one, this is so delicious. These are the um, hickory smoked balsamic vinegar mushrooms. And um, we just grill those on a grill pan on our stove top. So if you have like the Cuisinart Griddler or the George Foreman, or you have a stovetop um, griddle pan, then these work really great for that. I use the California balsamic hickory smoked vinegar. If you don't have access to that, you can use a sweet balsamic, a reduced one that's only like 4% acidity would be really nice. You can take your regular balsamic and you can simmer it um, to, uh, you know, kind of um, reduce it so that it will be sweeter and add a little bit of hickory smoke, liquid hickory smoke to it and get the same effect. Again, mashed potatoes. Here I have asparagus. You could substitute Brussels sprouts. You could substitute sweet potatoes. You could do oven roasted vegetables with it. Um, they're absolutely delicious. And dare I say, they give you kind of a meaty texture um, and so Tom really likes it because he actually gets to use a steak knife to cut that, which he thinks is really fun. Um, Tracy Reese says, can you use the lentil loaf recipe and put them in a muffin pan? You know, I think you absolutely could. I know some people um, take the lentil loaf recipe that is on our blog um, with the date glaze yeah. and well, they divide it well, isn't up. isn't that this or is this something different? That's something different. Oh. That's a different recipe. Okay. Um, and they will um, take it and put it like in the um, half cup super cubes or the one cup super cubes. So could you do it in the muffins? Absolutely. I haven't done it, so you'll have to play with the, um, cook, the cooking time with it. Back on this plate. Okay. Um, yeah, and so this is, you know, really fun. And like I said, Tom likes this because he gets to use a steak knife and cut it and eat it and um, they're really delicious. And you know, I use some garlic and some onion powder and you can add a little bit of chipotle powder if you want, or you could do hot sauce or you could, you know, do different herbs and it makes it really, really good. So Connie um, says, for mashed potatoes, how do you give them a more salty flavor without the salt? And so you can use the one of the salt substitutes. So there's one readily available online. You can get it from Amazon or you can go directly to the store, to the um, website. It's Benson's Table Tasty. And it has, um, they have different flavors and it does taste salty. And then Well Your World, um, go to their website. I think we have a link for it down in the show notes. We have an affiliate link for them. Is the Benson's and, Table Tasty in our pantry shop as yes, well? Yes, it's also on Amazon and it's in our pantry. It should be in our pantry yeah. shop on Amazon. And, um, and then if you go to Well Your World, they have um, some salt substitutes as well. They have one with nutritional yeast and one without. And then from Local Spicery, Maybe you can grab that for us, Tom, to, so I can show them the one from Local Spicery. Sure. It's right in here on the rack. Um, Is it alphabetical? No, that one, it's down. Well, yeah, it's down with the, above the big containers of stuff, above the big containers on that shelf in the center. I got gingerbread spice, onion, pepperoni spice, 
salacious. There you go. Good job. Um, this one. I'll bring it to the camera lens. Okay, this one is the one that tastes the most like salt to us, and um, we absolutely love it. It's made in small batches by Nick and Evelyn at Local Spicery. Oops, this way. <laughs> and everything's backwards. So it's pretty granular. And so that gives you a nice salty flavor. And then, um, you know, you can use uh, low sodium veggie broth when you make the potatoes, I use some broth in there. You can use low sodium vegetable broth, which will add a little bit of salt if you can tolerate a little bit of sodium in there. So, and, um, and you know, if you've been doing this for a while, um, you don't miss the salt in them because they're so flavorful, especially if you, you know, use the garlic. And then if you have some um, roasted garlic, that's even a deeper, richer, um, wonderful flavor that it adds. And we just don't, we don't miss the salt in those. Okay. Well, they want to see the label of the salacious. Here, I can pull that, that, that this camera refocuses, so. Okay. I just have to remember. Yeah, and I'll put a link in the show notes uh, to this as well. Okay. And there's a picture on site. Uh, and on do we local. have a link in the show notes to local spicery? Yes, there's a our our regular link to local spicery is in there. But I'll do a link. Um, I'll put it up in where it says in the description items discussed in this video. Uh huh. I'll go ahead and put a link up in there. Okay. So I dropped it in the chat once already, but I'll and, put it in the notes. And while you're there, you'll <laughs> while you're on their site, you'll want to get like pumpkin pie spice and the gingerbread spice and cinnamon and yeah. because those are all amazing yeah. and then if you watched our video um earlier this week am i on that camera we're, we'll switch because i wanted to add about, okay. about the site okay just when a second done. and then if you saw the um the um pumpkin curry you're gonna want to get the a curry spice from them as well yeah. In, in visiting our local spicery link, going to localspicery.com forward slash nutmeg notebook lands you on the nutmeg notebook spice page. And and what that is doing is it's keeping items off the page that have salt or sugar. Uh, so there, I mean, typically there's not oil in spices, but it's the SOS free selection of, of local spicery spices. So Nick was in that last interview was saying that you, you're, it's kind of the safe zone so far as salt and sugar is concerned. Right. Our blends, the blends on our page don't have uh, those items in it. So. Right, and if you want to know what's in this, I can tell you. It has sumac, onion, tomato, mustard, kombu, which kombu has a salty flavor to it, thyme, and cumin. And everything except the kombu is organic. And what you need to know is um, they don't necessarily buy everything that's certified organic because they get to know their suppliers and the growers. And so if the grower has organic practices but has not been certified organic, then they will go ahead and buy from them. Once they get to know them, know that that supplier or that grower um, is honest and making things growing things um, to their standards. And um, Nick and Evelyn are um, very, um, have very high standards. And so everyone that they do business with has to meet their standards. Connie wants to know, we're in Canada, can we get these on Amazon? So local spicery is not sold on Amazon and I don't believe that they can ship to Canada. I'm so sorry for that. The Table Tasty is. But you can yeah. get Table Tasty in yeah. Canada? Yeah. On we, the Canada the, site? Nick isn't shipping to Canada. We know that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. The, okay. The shipping is just... Okay. And the the uh, regulations on sending food. Spices is... Oh. Food. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's really Yeah. Tricky. I had just wondered because Thomas is doing small things to Canada. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure that he can't ship to Canada. Okay. We can verify it, but they're not on Amazon. But check the Table Tasty to see if you can get the Table Tasty on Amazon. Okay, um, I saw somebody said, oh, 
um, Tracy Reese said, I just ordered a bag of, I think she was, she's talking about the salacious after she tasted the sample bag. And it, it, it's so good. Tiffany said she's going to order some today. Uh, Jesse says I may have already wiped them out. <laughs> uh, Melody says the lentil loaf with date glaze has become our Thanksgiving meal dish. My family loves it. Thank you for sharing the recipe. You are so welcome, Melody. That makes me so happy. So, um, Tom, let's pop up the next picture okay. if we can. All right. Uh, what did I have next after the mushrooms? Uh, this. Oh yeah, is, this is fun. Yeah, this this is our old. Some folks may recognize this. This is our old YouTube. Uh, the photo our old YouTube banner was extracted from. Yeah, it is. So um, I like to set a pretty table for Thanksgiving. So that was from a couple years ago, um, and then um, if you make the curry butternut soup. And that is one of our favorite soups, super easy to make. I usually double the recipe and I make it in the eight quart instant pot because it freezes up beautifully. Now it can be um, a first course or another fun thing to do with this if you're hosting or even if you're going to someone's house, you can ask them ahead of time, is to make it, it's a creamy smooth soup. And so you're going to use your immersion blender or you're going to put it in your high powered blender and you're going to make it super silky smooth. And it has butternut squash and curry seasoning and apple and um, onion in it and garlic and ginger. It's delicious, you guys. So you can actually serve it up in mugs and people can sip it. And so you know how everybody wants to gather in the kitchen with you when you're prepping the meal. It doesn't matter how big or small your kitchen is, everybody ends up in the kitchen. And so you can um, put it in mugs and let everybody drink it, or you can make it part of your meal and you can have it as one of your courses if you're doing that. Or you, I've also taken it to potlucks and I have just taken um, like, like um, six ounce um, hot cups and people put it in the six ounce hot cups and then just take spoons and that works really well. And I take a small ladle, not a big soup ladle, but a small ladle so that it's easy to get it in the cup. And that works well. You can make it as part of a main dish if you put like wild rice in the bottom of the soup bowl first or it could be brown rice, or it could be, you know, white rice, it could be millet, it could be quinoa, it could be whatever your favorite grain is. And then you put the soup on top, and then we like to chop up some arugula and put um, chopped up arugula on the top of it. Not only is it beautiful, but it's very, very tasty. And I really like it with the wild rice. And then that salad there, that is the um, a beet, mango salad of Chef AJ's and I'm pretty sure she has a video on her YouTube channel for that and you can make it with either mint or cilantro and it's really delicious. Okay, um, Stephanie says, how long do the local spiceries spices last once opened and what's the best way to store them? So um, they mill these in small batches um, and Stephanie, and so when you get these, they are um, super, super fresh. So they're going to last for months on your shelf. They do say that light and air and moisture are not friends of um, dried herbs and spices. So you wanna keep them in a dark place. You want to keep the lid on tight. And when you go to dispense them, when you're cooking. The reason they don't have a shaker top on them is because they don't want you putting it over a steaming pot because that moisture will get in there and it will cause it to cake up and it will also cause it to start to um, decay, I guess is the word I want to say. So it's not good for them. That's why they don't come with a shaker top on them. So dispense them, put the jar down, and then um, go to your pot, and then they'll last for months. Yes, Tom, I felt like you had a, an immediate 
you covered it. Oh, okay. Yeah, because <laughs> and, and what comes to mind uh, on that is when I use you know, our spice cabinet is to the right of the stove and I grab out, let's say the, you know, the table tasty, it has the shaker top and I'll start shaking and then over my whatever I'm sauteing and it all cakes up around the little holes. Right. The, the moisture, it's grabbing it right there so you know the moisture is getting up inside the bottle and then it doesn't want to come out. So, so yeah, N Nick has a strong philosophy. Nick from Local Spicery has a strong philosophy about not putting your spice jar over the pot. So That's right. So keep it away from light and um, exposed to air for long periods of time. And um, they also say they have refill bags that come in a plastic bag. And he says that's not an optimal way to keep them either. He would like you, if you buy those refill bags, to transfer it to a glass jar with a tight um, fitting lid. And so, and these lids have, um, they have a little, what would you call this, like a little gasket? It's a seal, it's got a, a seal, rubber seal, silicone seal. A, a little silicone seal at the top of it to help prevent air from getting in. So um, so we um, we keep some um, spices up in our cupboard by the stove and then all my major spices are in the pantry and we keep the door closed to keep the light out. So no light, no air, um, and there you go. Are you done with that Thanksgiving picture or did you um, do this? Yes. Yes, I talked about the soup. Let's go to the next one. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Oh, that's a whole bunch of stuff. I think that's the what I made for the video that we made for last year. Maybe you can find the video and post it. Um, don't forget about having a big salad. So. What would the name of it have been? Uh, thanks. Something about Thanksgiving, probably. I'll search our site. And it would have been in November. Okay. I'll it would have been November last year. I'll go take a look while you go talk. Go take a look. And so there you can see I made um, I made the lentil loaf with the date glaze. And the thing about it, you guys, is it serves up beautifully. Like, you know how lentil loaves most of the time fall apart when you go to cut them? This one does not. It's pretty dense, and so it really holds its shape, which I like. So you can actually slice the whole thing up, and everybody can take a slice of it and it will stay together. And that date glaze on top is just so delicious. So I'm kind of talking myself into wanting to make it this weekend because we haven't had it for such a long time. And there I'm also showing you a beautiful chopped salad. I made um, Japanese sweet potato croutons. I have a persimmon. I have pomegranate seeds. Don't forget about fresh herbs. Fresh herbs make everything burst with flavor. Um, and don't forget to have a salad because when you have a salad along with your meal, if you're having some higher calorie density foods, eat that salad first, kind of sequence oh, your- Oh wow, here you go. Sequence I'm, your meal. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, check out this COVID hair. <laughs> You got the there long you hair. go. This video's got the long hair. Wow. Was my hair that long last year? Was that from last year? Yeah, this is... Wow. Well, no, this is two years ago. Two this, years ago. Yeah, this okay. is two years ago. Two years ago. So that's the spread, though. That's the right one. Okay. okay. Yeah, that I'll was, find that and I'll put it on. That but, was COVID uh, hair. Sorry for the interruption. I just got a text from my hairdresser, too, that she has to have back surgery. She's not going to be able to cut my hair for you a long time. Oh, dear. Uh, yeah. Here we go. Okay. What I got to get back to uh, okay. where, what, what we were doing There we here. go. Um, so sequence, eat the, the um, lower calorie density food first. Start with a nice big plate of salad. That will help make you full so you won't eat too much of the higher calorie density foods. So I also did um, sweet potatoes. So sometimes I'll just do a big platter of um, sweet potatoes. Bake them earlier in the week and then, be, you know, like, 20 minutes before we're going to eat. I'll cut them in half, score them, put them in the air fryer at 400 degrees for 20 minutes, and they come out beautiful. I did the garlic mashed potatoes. I did the, um, the cranberry chutney. I did the Brussels sprouts um, with butternut squash and a pomegranate glaze. Go to that link that we gave you. You'll find links to all of the recipes there. I did the curry ginger butternut squash soup. You can see how it looks in a cup or in a soup bowl. 
I made the um, apple oak crisp. I would crisp. totally have this for this year's Thanksgiving. <laughs> We've got to see what the kids want too. And then I made the fall pudding. Um, there is a Japanese sweet potato in the front there stuffed with the um, cranberry chutney. And, um, and we always put out the clementine oranges. Um, everybody can peel those. They can snack on them while we're waiting to eat if they need to. Um, I don't usually do appetizers because I want everybody to really be hungry for um, lunch. And, um, but we always do try to have some fresh fruit as well so that people have that to munch on. And that makes, that makes a delicious um, spread. Or you could do the fruity coleslaw instead of the salad. And the salad we toss right before we eat it. And it's delicious. Okay, um, another question. Uh, Tracy Reese says, does kombu have iodine in it? Yes, it does. It, it does have a little bit of iodine in it, I believe. Well, should I say, I think it does. Maybe Tom can Google that or Jesse can Google it. But I think kombu has iodine in it. I'll take a look. I know that kelp, the kelp does, the kelp granules do. Um, the kombu does have a salty taste to it. I think it does have iodine, but Tom's gonna double check for us. So we will see. Um, so anyway, that makes just a really nice meal. So what you can do in advance, um, you can um, bake the um, potatoes in advance you can chop the salad that morning. You can make the, the um, Japanese sweet potato croutons in advance. You can make the soup the day before or even a couple days before. You can make the fall pudding um, the day before. It's good for three or four days. Uh, I would make the Brussels sprouts that day. You could mix up the lentil loaf the day before and then just bake it. Um, the day you're going to serve it. The mashed potatoes I would make just before I'm going to serve them. So the lentil loaf, prep it ahead of time. The um, cranberry chutney you can make a few days in advance. And you could even make the apple crisp um, the day before. Sometimes I just get it all made up, but then I don't bake it until we're getting ready to sit down to eat the meal and then I'll pop it in the oven so that I can serve it hot and serve it with some, um, I like to make like a banana mango nice cream um, to go on it. You could do something in your Ninja Creamy. Are you still on this slide? I'm ready to go to the next one. Okay. So you don't have to make it too difficult, you guys. You can make it um, easy. This is an absolutely delicious salad. Um, when I went to visit my parents a couple years ago, I was um, really into this salad then. The Japanese sweet potatoes, you bake them ahead of time and then I chunk them up and then I put them in the air fryer. My parents didn't have an air fryer at the time. They do now, but they didn't have an air fryer at the time. So I just put them in the oven under the broiler and broiled them. And then I have the clementines in there and lots of pomegranate seeds. And then I just used um, the Napa Valley, Napa Valley Naturals Grand Reserve, which is a 4% acidity balsamic vinegar. And the underneath is a chopped salad. And I made that for us every day. They, my parents ate that with me every day and my mom continued to make it after I left because it is so delicious. Everybody loves it. I also have chopped apple in there and that recipe is also on the blog. I think it's either called fall or autumn salad, but if you go to the link for the holiday meals, you'll find it. Next one. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. I got it. Okay, so this is the Caesar salad. Um, this is my vegan Caesar dressing, which we absolutely love. It's made with 
um, tofu, the silken tofu, and then the garlic chickpea croutons. And seriously, you can serve this to everybody, standard American diet or not, and it's absolutely delicious. So um, I have made it when we've gone to our daughter's house and her, all of her in-laws are coming and um, I'll make a, a huge, I'll use like my 17 inch um, Holland bowl and fill it with romaine and <clears throat> cucumbers and tomatoes and shredded carrots and then make the dressing. And I serve the chickpea croutons on the side and let everybody take as many of those as they want. And <clears throat> it's a huge hit. Next one. Oh, these are the ranch twice baked potatoes, you guys. So <clears throat> you can make like a great big platter of these um, to serve, or you can, you know, you can take them to a potluck if you want. These are really fun and delicious. <clears throat> I use my cheese sauce and the ranch dressing on them. So there's some ranch dressing in the filling as well as um, over the top. And they're really fun and festive looking and you can make as many as you wish. Um, that would, for me, that with a salad can be a whole meal for me, but they can also be like a side dish. And here's the thing, if you're um, eating with other people who don't eat like us, you know, like for Thanksgiving and Christmas, a lot of the side dishes really can be vegan. Um, you know, with if you take off the butter, and the cream, um, you've got a lot of vegan options that, you know, people don't even realize, oh, you know, sweet potatoes are vegan, Brussels sprouts are vegan, green beans are vegan, mashed potatoes can be vegan. Okay, next one. Oh, and this is from this week. This is um, Nick from Local Spicery. This is the curry um, pumpkin dish that he made for us. <clears throat> absolutely delicious this would be wonderful to serve for thanksgiving um tiffany gave me that idea because she was like hmm that could be a thanksgiving option you know to put if you're doing like a buffet um it's very beautiful and festive and it's absolutely delicious so you can make the full fat one like he did with the full fat um coconut milk you can use light coconut milk or you can use plant milk with a little bit of coconut extract to keep the fat down. And um, this would be a really great dish. I would double it. We felt like it made four hearty servings. And so I would absolutely um, double the recipe. And instead of pumpkin, I had a kabocha squash, which I used, which made it even um, a little bit sweeter because the kabocha squash is a little sweeter than the um, the sugar pumpkin um, and so absolutely delicious love it highly recommend that you make it if you don't have the um, curry blend that he used it's okay use whatever your favorite curry blend is or you have time to order it from local spicery and get it okay people are talking about cinnamon Oh, this is our lasagna. Now, we absolutely positively love the lasagna. This is something that everyone in our family will eat from the smallest child to the oldest grown up. Everybody loves this. Um, my parents are not plant based, none of my family is. And my mom made this for her and my dad and my brothers, and they didn't even know that it was vegan and um, it's just really, really delicious. So we like to have this actually for um, Christmas and, and we have it for a lot of holidays because it's so good. I usually make two of them now because there's so many of us and we like it and we will, everybody wants some leftovers to take home. So I'll make two pans of it and you can actually make, you can prep the filling a day or two ahead of time. It has a um, I call it a tofu ricotta with spinach in it. You can make that a couple days ahead of time. You can saute the mushrooms ahead of time and you can make the marinara ahead of time or you can buy marinara if you want to buy marinara. 
Um, the only SOS free one that I know of for sure is from Well Your World and um, it's delicious. So in fact, the last time that I made lasagna, I used the Well Your World, um, two jars of the Well Your World. Don't get the mushroom, get the classic because this has mushrooms in it already. And so just get the classic one and um, it works great and it just makes the recipe that much um, easier. So, um, or if you have, you know, your favorite marinara, I give you all the recipes to make everything and, um, and our family absolutely loves this. This is like a really big hit and we get a lot of positive feedback from people that say that they really like it. So um, we do Thanksgiving a little more kind of traditional, I guess, where we try to have sweet potatoes and that kind of stuff, you know, that everybody's used to having. But for Christmas, we were, my family is very open to doing anything. We can do um, a burrito bowl buffet. We can do, um, the lasagna, we can do chili, um, you know, it's that day we're all more about um, playing with the kids, the grandkids, and all the toys and having fun than we are spending all of our time eating. Um, and then we like to, if it's a nice day, we love to, you know, go to a trailhead and take everybody on a nature walk. Uh, Liz says, um, I'm late, Tammy and Tom. I love the pumpkin curry video you did with Nick. Great show, thanks. Thank you so much. That was really fun. And we're going to be having him on again soon, and we're going to be talking all about cinnamon. So I'll tell you at the end when that's coming up. Okay, next next slide. Oh, it's here. It's ready. Oh, yeah, this is the apple oat crisp with um that was a banana mango ice cream that i made to go on top of it. it was before i had the ninja actually one thing that i like to do that makes um serving up the nice cream um quick and easy is to you know you can go ahead well with the ninja it makes it really easy but um i would take and scoop it and put it in muffin tins and freeze it and then I'll have that nice little ball of ice cream already scooped, already to go. And then um, take my hot apple crisp and put it on the serving dish and then take the ice cream out of the muffin tin. Or, or you can, you know, take when once it's frozen, you can put it in a bag or a Tupperware and have it in your freezer. But then that makes serving go really, really fast if you have a lot of people that you're serving. But um, I can tell you that this has been a very, very popular recipe and apples are in season, so this is the time to do it. Uh, Tr Tracy Reese says, would you freeze the lentil loaf whole or cut up first and then freeze it? Well, if I was going to, um, if you're going to heat up individual slices, then I would go ahead and slice it and freeze the individual slices. Um, if you are going to make it ahead of time and then bake it, I would just make it probably a day or two ahead and then pull it out of the fridge, let it sit on the counter for about an hour so that it gets the chill taken off of it. Um, because when you're heating up something that's cold all the way through like that, sometimes what happens is the outside all gets done, but the center does not it stays cold so um, that's what i would do if i was wanting to make it ahead and then um, bake it to serve the whole thing that's what i would do i hope that answers your question okay next one. Oh, so this is a parfait that i was talking about this is the fall pudding which is made with sweet potatoes and you want just like the orange sweet potatoes the yellow um or not yellow the orange uh garnets or jewels and um and then make the the um, chutney and then you can layer it and it's so, so good. Or you could make chia jam, you know, out of whatever your favorite flavor of berries is, and you could layer it, and that would be really good too. 
So um, it's just fun and it's festive looking. I've also taken um, some oil-free granola and Drina Burton has a recipe. Kathy Fisher has a recipe um, that you can use and I've layered it with granola or I've bought cute little, they were disposable dessert cups just from like, I don't know, the 99 cent store um, when I was taking the dessert um, to, to someone who serves standard American diet food for the holidays. And I put the fall pudding in them because I knew there was going to be multiple desserts, right? But also everybody always wants to try our vegan food. And so they were cute little stemmed glasses and I put the fall pudding in there <clears throat> and then I made Kathy Fisher's granola and I sprinkled the granola on top and that was a really big hit. Everybody loved it. Okay, I've got to take a drink of water. I'm getting a frog in my throat. Okay, and next one. And this can be made ahead of time. And then these are my chocolate cherry brownies. Absolutely love this recipe. And then I just made um, the chocolate nice cream to go on top. You can do a chocolate cherry or you can make my fudge sickle um, recipe and you can turn that into uh, nice cream especially if you have the ninja and you'll find the ninja recipe for that is on the blog it's so good and these are a really delicious <laughs> little cookie but why is that picture so little it's the size of the picture i'll blow it up oh that is so funny okay so these have a lot of seeds in them chia and different seeds in them these do not appeal to children my grandchildren do not like these but the adults really like these and they have chocolate chips in them they're more indulgent they're going to be a more high calorie density food but um dessert but they're really fun for the holidays and so the recipe for this is yeah if they go to that link that we gave them boy we have um Oh, the, the holiday recipe blog. Yeah, the holiday recipe blog. You'll okay. find the link for it there. Oh, this is tiny a tiny picture too. Okay, so this is something, a tradition I started a few years ago with our oldest granddaughter. And this is just so much fun to make, you guys. Um, she helped me make that. And we actually, we did a video when she was here. I think her little fingers got in the video, but yeah. that, was, that was it. Um, and so this is a tradition and something that I do with them every year. Last year, I gave each one of them a paper plate, um, a festive paper plate, and then, um, and fruit, and everybody got to make their own, and then they got to eat it. And so, you know, it's really fun. So you can do the turkey for Thanksgiving. You can do a Christmas tree or a wreath for Christmas, you know, you can do a bunny for Easter, you can do all different kinds of fun things. And it's just a great way to play with the fresh fruit and a great, yeah. everybody loves it and we eat it and it's fun and that's yeah. a and pear. You, you pre-sculpted the feet, right? I pre-sculpted the feet and, yes. you, and then you did the beaks and then the, the eyes are little, uh, not raisins, but um, crayon. I, had, I couldn't find the um, currants last year and so I just took raisins and cut raisins in half. Oh, okay. And then yeah. we stuck a toothpick in them and then Yeah, stick so we, them in we the helped pear. them get the pear down. Yes. And in position and then they did the rest. Yeah. And we show them a picture. It's good to give them the picture so they can see the picture. Um, and it's just a fun a fun playful project and it gets them, you know, to eat the fruit as well. And then this is the chocolate chia pudding. Now this is one of Tom's and my favorite desserts and it's made with sweet potatoes, any kind of sweet potato. And um, you make it in the blender and it's super fast and easy. And I have a bunch of variations so you can make it mocha, peppermint, um, you know, you can do orange in it, whatever you want. We like to put some berries on top and some cacao nibs or you could use the um, dark chocolate chips that don't have any added sugar. And it's just, it's fun and easy, can be made ahead of time. And you know, you can put it in little individual um, servings, which is really nice. And then this is fun 
to do with the kids too. These are just clementines, and then you're using a little bit of. Why are you laughing? I just figured out what I'm looking at. Okay. <laughs> the little miniature pumpkins. Isn't it cute? So the grandkids can make these too, but seriously, even the adults get a kick out of these. And then a little bit of celery for the stem. So um, you know, try to do fun things with the grandkids for the holidays as well. Is yeah. that the last one? Yeah, that's the last one. You okay, probably cool. need to go back and scan for questions okay. now. I'll, I'll look too. It's fun. So um, Ellen says, would you spin in the Ninja Creamer, Creamy, and then scoop out and then freeze the scoops? You know, with the Ninja Creamy, I really wouldn't do it ahead of time. Just because the texture coming right out of the Ninja is so great. So I would just assign someone to be my scooper um, for that. And I would make my pints up ahead of time and make sure that I have enough. And the reason that I liked when I was making the... Um, banana and ice cream in like my Vitamix is that, you know, it would take a while to make it in there. And so if I was feeding like 15, 18, 20 people, which we have, then I like to have it scooped up ahead of time because I would have to make so many batches of it in the um, blender. But the Ninja blends in like a little over two minutes and so I would just have all my pints ready to go and then you can blend one after the other and then have somebody be your scooper for that. Okay. Trish has a question about, um, you know, we're on this quest for new salad containers, uh, you know, to replace our nine cup ones. Yes. And we, a company actually reached out to us that had a glass container that was, I think, eight and a half cups. And we wrote back to him and said, yes, we're interested in checking out because I don't know if she saw one of our videos or something. Um, I so, think she saw that we were batch preppers. Yeah. So I sent the email back to her and said, yes, I'd love to try out. But in particular, this size. And then I never heard back from them. No. I, should I should probably try. We try again because it may have gone to their junk folder. Yeah, I'll try that again. So no, that quest continues. Thank you for asking. Jesse said she agrees with you, Tom. Those pumpkins made her Yeah, I, I didn't really pay attention when we were, do when we were getting all of this ready and then as you start talking about it, I go oh those are little pumpkins yeah they're so fun they're so cute and the kids yeah. like them and you know we try to do things that um not that they don't get things that are sweet because they do um they absolutely do they get they mama lets them have you know muffins and they get a, a cupcake for birthdays and that kind of stuff um but we try to you know make their fruit and their veggies and stuff fun so we have little, um, little, uh, they're, I, they're not cookie cutters, they're veggie and fruit cutters, things so we can, you know, make bananas in fun shapes and um, all kinds of, you know, things. Yes. Um, did, did you guys uh, uh, answer uh, Mari Z. Dotes' question about which curry do you use in the butternut squash soup? Did you uh, uh, catch that question earlier? I did not. So go to that video. Um, it's the bow cap curry um, that we used in it. But also at the end of that video, Nick went through and discussed every curry blend that they have and gave um, like ideas and suggestions. What it's used for. Yeah. yeah, ideas and suggestions and told us, you know, if it was sweet, if it was, um, all of his curry blends are mild because he said you can always add heat. You can add heat by adding ground chili or a jalapeno, which is what I did. I didn't have the um, chili, that the ground chili that he used in his, so I just added a jalapeno to it. I've, so I've been scrolling back up to catch questions. Did, yes. you, did you answer, Mona, about how long to let the lentil loaf set before you cut it? Yeah, it only needs probably about 10 minutes or so. Like, you know, just like lasagna or any kind of like casserole or anything, if you let it set for about 10 minutes, then the juices that are all hot and bubbly inside have time to um, cool down a little bit and it just helps everything stay together nicely. Yeah. And you talked so, about the lentil of freezing very well. I think I heard you say it that. Does freeze, it does freeze really well. So, yeah. and some people are dividing it up in the super cubes and um, 
baking it and freezing it or not baking it, putting it in the super cubes and then they'll bake it later. Uh, so. Trish Fish is asking, are you, is it easy to find kombu? She's not familiar with it. Where do you get kombu? And, and I did post about the iodine, and so did uh, Jesse. Oh, and it, is it, there it, iodine oh, in kombu? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. In fact, it it's, it's one of the highest sources of, of yeah. natural iodine. So, so we use a little bit of kombu when we make beans. I'll just cut a little, like, two-by-three-inch square and toss it into the beans when I make the beans, and it does give yeah. them a little bit of a salty flavor. Are we on your camera? Yeah, I'm on yours, but oh, where okay. do you get the kombu? Oh, so I buy it at um, Whole Foods, but Nick at Local Spicery has it now, and he has um, a, a good resource yeah. for uh, it. Once you get, um, I was doing that video with, uh, that we posted a couple days ago, the, the uh, upload. It wasn't a live, it was a regular upload uh, video, so I was editing on it. And so I worked a lot with his site, getting that video read it, ready, and... It's so well organized. You, like you mentioned, we go into localspicery.com forward slash not make no book. And then everything, you know, the landing page there is SOS free. But then going beyond that, he's got this wonderful alphabetical thing. And so I was able to look up almost all the spices, not being, you know, a kitchen person necessarily. Uh, I was able to find everything he was talking about on his alphabetized list. So it was really easy to, because you just mentioned the, the type of, curry made me think of this the mm -hmm. bow cap the bow cap i thought okay well i don't know what that means but i found it in the bees it was right there spelled like it sounds so anyway and I'm very... if you do if you are going to order from them please do use our um affiliate link right which is in the show notes too that really that helps us a lot if you would thank you um so i saw a note here oh trish fish says tom snapware does have an eight and a half cup plastic one uh, for the salads. But we were trying to find an alternative to plastic. We were trying to yeah. see if we could find something. Well, and also height is an issue, and it's not a deal breaker. Um, we're back on my camera now. Okay. Um, the, the current containers we have, many of you have seen photos of the refrigerator. They stack three, uh, the height of them, we can stack them three high and get the entire batch prepped um, assembly of 14 of them in this one refrigerator because we're stacking and still them. have room for we're stacking things. them uh, three high and um, left and right and they all fit that way so if a container is just like one inch taller than the current ones that's a deal breaker unless we abandon our current storage layout which may need to happen but we could always store half of them in the garage fridge and then bring them in oh as needed. man i'd have to walk all the way to the garage to get a salad i might decide not to because it's so far away i might eat something unhealthy you no? might no probably oh, not no probably so not. um you're funny yeah. So Tiffany it, says pretty flowers today. Thank yeah. you, Tiffany. Yeah, isn't it amazing as she was going through this slideshow, all of this beautiful, wonderful food, and it's all healthy. Yeah. Uh, as you were getting to the end of that presentation, I went, wow, we've got a lot of really good, good food. We do. We do. And, you know, there's so many choices. Um, everyone's posting their um, holiday fair, their recipes on their blogs. So um, check out... Uh, you know, um, the Giroudi family, check out Well Your World, check out the plant-based cooking show. Um, uh, you're, if Some of the recipes you're going to have to alter. Not everybody is oil-free. Has she done some holiday stuff, healthy cooking? Oh, I'm sure she has lots of holiday. Um, healthy cooking with Shada. Um, she has a YouTube channel as well as a blog. Um, you know, there's just so many. Kim Campbell from um, Plant Pure Communities. Um, there's so many people that have recipes. There's a ton of them out there. Um, you know, what we have is just a small sampling. I did see somebody ask, will you be, oh, Virginia says, will you be writing a cookbook? You know, it's kind of on our list to maybe do that one day. Um, we just, we are so busy that um, although Chef AJ tells me all the time, you have enough recipes on your blog, all you would have to do is put those all in a PDF and you'd be ready to go for a cookbook. Um, but 
you know, I want, when I do one, I want it to have beautiful photos and I want um, a color photo of every recipe because that's what I love when I look at a cookbook. I do want a real cookbook where you can turn the pages um, because I like to sit and look at cookbooks and um, rather than to have it as an ebook. So I guess I have my standards of what I want yeah. set pretty high. If you high. have a comment, drop, drop a comment in the show notes or in the, not in the show notes. I'm the one that puts things in the show notes. Leave a comment below the video um, if you would like a full color uh, version as opposed to an ebook only. I mean, we have released some e stuff. We're gonna release some more e stuff, uh, electronic uh, PDF style stuff smaller works yeah but if we're going to do a whole book tammy does want to you know have it be hard copy and and in color yeah. so so a couple more things that i wanted to say is you know again i just want to remind you that the holidays are more um than just the food so don't get frazzled about the food we need to um eat to live not live to eat um, although we still want to serve delicious food, we still want to eat delicious food. But, the, you know, the holidays are really about getting together um, with the people that you love and um, sharing that love and that time um, with those people. So if you don't have control over what is being served, you do need to compromise, find a compromise that you can live with. Or if you're having people over who don't eat the way that you eat you're going to need to find a compromise that you can live with so what does that look like so for us um, some holidays we get together with um, extended family who does not eat like us the great thing about them is that they respect that we are eating plant-based they always ask us every year, so you still eating plant-based? Yep, we sure are. Well, you're looking good, you know. Um, and so we get a kick out of that. But they respect the fact that we're plant-based and they go out of their way to try to make us plant-based food as well. And then um, we always take plant-based food and enough to share. If, I'm, if we are going to someone's house for Thanksgiving, I will usually make the lentil shepherd's pie and take that with us because everybody will eat it. It tastes delicious. It's like a side dish for them. It's a main dish for us. Just make sure you get in the buffet line at the beginning so that there is some of that left um, for you. Otherwise, if you're at the end, it could be all gone. And so that's one strategy to share with you. They will have their animal products there um, and we're okay with that um, because we we like the fact that they respect that we eat different than them and we respect the fact that they eat different than us. We know that not everybody's in the same place in their life journey. Some people are never going to eat the way that we eat and we respect that. When we host um, a few, a couple years into being plant-based, we hosted a big family-wide um, meal at our house for Thanksgiving and Tom did agree to cook the turkey outside and he said this will be the last time I ever do this because he was just completely grossed out and disgusted by having to do that and so now um, you know we'll tell people that if they want to bring their meat they're welcome to we just no longer cook meat at our house and um, and that works and they're fine with that because you know it's important to them they want to have their meat another compromise I know someone who was hosting Thanksgiving at their house they did not want to have to make all of the um, animal based products and so they ordered from a grocery store that had a Thanksgiving meal standard American diet style and then they made you know lentil loaf and um, vegan mashed potatoes and something else so that they could have um, their stuff too that way they could accommodate the standard American diet people 
but they didn't have to make all that stuff from scratch and they just heated it up. I thought, well, that was a compromise that they came up with that they could live with and they felt comfortable um, doing that. So, and if you're going to someone else's house, just take enough food with you. And I, you know, I always um, take a dessert too because I wanna be able to have dessert while everybody else is having dessert. And so, and take something that, you know, will be widely accepted and enjoyed by everybody, which we have plenty of things that fit that bill. Um, you can veganize some of your family favorite items. Um, just know that if people aren't eating like we are, sometimes that veganized version is not gonna taste good to them because they're gonna compare everything to the original. And if they're used to eating um, highly palatable food that is calorically dense and full of salt, oil, and sugar, some of our super healthy foods that we eat just are not gonna taste good to them because they're used to highly palatable food. So, you know, just keep that in mind. Remember that like Thanksgiving and Christmas dishes, a lot of the side dishes easily can be made vegan. Mashed potatoes, sweet potatoes, green beans. You can make a vegan pumpkin pie, the cranberry chutney or relish, Brussels sprouts, salads. You can make things, you know, with different grains. So many things that we can have. And I can just fill up on all those wonderful side dishes and those can easily be my meal. Um, I, like I said, I will add salt to food when I'm cooking for people who follow the standard American diet or people who eat whole, uh, plant-based but they don't eliminate salt so that my food will taste good to them. I might, you know, sprinkle nuts in the salad because that will be more appealing to them. And I'll use soy milk instead of oat milk because the soy milk has a higher fat content and it will give a richer mouth feel um, to whatever it is that I'm making. And we try to add a um, activity to our days when we're celebrating um, holidays. And um, also, if you're going out of town, just know that um, like Whole Foods has a vegan menu that you can get. I don't know if they can do oil free for you, but if you were going to order it, you could ask if they could. Um, at least it would be vegan if you're going out of town and you you know want to have food, but you don't have the opportunity to cook wherever it is you're going. Um, you know, there's different things that you can do in advance. You can make things, freeze them, take them with you. If you're going by car, of course, that's much easier because you can take a cooler, but you can still do it even when you're flying. I have taken veggie burgers and muffins and um, sweet potatoes and all kinds of stuff and have frozen them. And then they can either go in my luggage that I check or they can go on my carry-on in my carry-on and then when I get where I'm going I have all that food that I can eat so um, any questions for me about um, having your um, holiday meal with mixed group of people I know that that can be a challenge for a lot of people Kim says, after being plant-based for the last few years, I was surprised by my reaction at Whole Foods when I walked by the meat counter. It took me off guard. We both feel so much happier with the way we eat now. I know it's it's disconcerting, isn't yeah, it, when you do that? We're fortunate in ours. Um, Jesse doesn't even like going to Whole Foods because the, their fish smell is getting out into the store, uh -huh. which, would be, which would be bad. Yeah. Our Whole Foods has, we have a huge produce area, and then we kind of hang a right turn and head on over to another section of the store. We never uh, go past the meat. And we don't ever go past it. So, and it's a fairly, as I think about it, it's a fairly small um, counter compared to some other stores. Well, they have yeah. the self-serve counter and then they have the service counter where they have the case where you pick stuff out as well. Yeah, well, we but we wind up not actually going, going by, by it because we, we, we get our potatoes and then we and then we turn right. And so we don't even go into that back left-hand corner of the store. I mean, in other stores, of course, it could be in a different arrangement. Yeah. But, uh, and the one out at uh, in Folsom, 
also is a bigger store, but um, it so is yeah. a bigger store. So, so we haven't had you know if you get if you do go over there close, yeah, you can smell it. But we just tend to like skirt around that we whole do. area. Yeah, so, we hit the produce first always. Yeah. We go to the produce and then we work our yeah. way back. And we wish that stuff wasn't Today. there, but the stuff that we do need is there, so. Right, exactly. So um, some things I wanna <clears throat> tell you about that are coming up. Um, first, uh, well, I wanna mention Health Science Magazine. The fall issue is out. I was just, um, wow, I, it came yesterday in the mail and I spent about an hour last night reading it. It's just wonderful. There's recipes in it. It's the, it is a magazine without any advertisement in it it's all whole food plant-based and the recipes are all sos free there's wonderful articles in here um, by doctors and um, there's testimonials about this way of eating and um, i was particularly struck by an article in here that was written by dr joel Furman. Um, the title is dare to be different and um it has, he just really um, knows about food addiction and the problems that people have. And um, I highlighted a lot of it because it was just, it was such a great article. And I thought that, um, you know, reading this before the holidays would be um, really good. So uh, I know that a lot of um, plant-based bloggers influencers youtubers talk about you know eat whatever you want on the holiday it's just what it's just one day you know one day is not going to hurt you don't be restrictive being restrictive can backfire it all depends on you and your circumstances so he talks about if you're a food addict how do you know you're a food addict well um, basically probably if you have yo-yo dieted um, at all, you probably have food addiction issues because if you could have moderated what you were eating and not gained weight, you wouldn't have yo-yo dieted. I'm definitely a food addict because I yo-yo dieted um, for almost 40 years. So um, he talks about, you know, if you're not a food addict and you eat something that isn't so healthy a few times a year, it's not going to trigger you to want to have more of it. But most people haven't gotten to that point yet. Most people are strongly tempted, drawn to the foods that will harm them, and they need to break free. To do that, and anyone who wants um, to beat an addiction, have to mindfully make the hard choices to refuse the foods that are tempting you, withstanding the internal and the external pressure to partake. And when you do abstain repeatedly and consistently, avoiding the highly palatable and overly seasoned and salted and sugared food substances, substances, you will get to the point where all your taste muscles and all the strength in your taste buds come back. It is then that you will again enjoy natural food the most, and you won't need to reward yourself with unhealthy, addictive foods anymore. Your drive to consume unhealthy food will lessen over time and eventually go away if you stick with eating healthfully long enough. It is an added benefit and aids success if you learn how to make healthy eating taste great too. I can attest to that, that the longer you abstain from those unhealthy foods, the easier it gets to abstain. And he talks about how when you draw a line that you cannot cross, a decision that simply isn't up for review, it enhances your cerebral decision making and eventually silences that part of you that is your own worst enemy, constantly tempting tempting you. It is accepted for alcoholics that there can't be any fooling around with alcohol. Food addicts may think it's different for them, but it's not. Dabbling in unhealthy substances makes it harder to keep eating healthfully and not be triggered into binges of destructive eating. So I just loved that. Um, the article is in the fall issue. Although this has already been sent out, if you want to order the Health Science Magazine and in the message box at checkout at the final page, if you put in there 
um, that you learned about this from about the magazine from Nutmeg Notebook, Mark will go ahead and send you this issue. And um, if you don't already subscribe, I highly recommend becoming a subscriber. Uh, we don't get any, we don't have an affiliate with them or anything. We just love the work that they're doing. We love the magazine and that's why we're sharing it with you. Um, we learned about it a few years ago. Electronic archives. And they have electronic archives that you have access to years and years of past publications, recipes, books, all kinds of resources. And um, like I said, they are all about eating whole food, plant-based, SOS free. And Tom has a link in the show notes yeah, I put on a how link. to get there. I put a link down in the show notes. Um, and, uh, and I lost my train of thought. Um, oh, yeah, it, it, it's $35 for the year to be a member of, NA, of NHA. And to get if you're the out of the U.S., it's a, like maybe $10 more, I think. Five or ten dollars more, I don't recall. Yeah, because the shipping because there's a more mailing, um, because it is a physical copy, but all the electronic copies, as Tammy mentioned, are archived on the site. So mm -hmm. for thirty five dollars, you get all future magazines and then, and then you get a whole bunch of past ones as well as other right. materials. So it's a, a fairly low price for the amount of material you get for it. So, um, anyway, in the checkout, as you're as you're when you join the NHA. Because you're you're joining the NHA, you're not specifically ordering the magazine. You're joining a membership to the NHA, which then gets you the magazine and the other things as well. And then there's a little box at the very end, that we, and you just got to type in Nutmeg Notebook or referred by Nutmeg Notebook. It's a comments box, yeah. and then that gets and, you that, that. And he'll go ahead and send you a copy of this. The, the previous And then issue, when you yeah. get it, you'll notice on the back that they're talking about the 75th anniversary that's coming. Oh boy, you, uh, let's use your camera for that. It focuses. Okay. So the better, that's much better. Anniversary. Who, yeah, we and know some of those who's people. on there? Who's going to be presenting? Oh, well, I see Dylan. Yeah. yeah and I see Brittany. Yeah. And, and JP. I see JP and Dr. Sabatino, Dr. Joel Furman. And there's some real, a lot of... And who else? I see, do I see Tammy Kramer? Oh, and Tom. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we will be at the conference it will be June um, 23rd through the 25th. Some people do arrive on the 22nd so that um, they can take part, part in um, a group hike. And we will be doing a cooking demo. We hope that we get to meet a lot of you there. There is an early bird rate if you register before. It's available through December 31st. Um, then you will get the early bird rate to go and um, we hope that we get to meet a lot of you at this so we're super excited about it we were supposed to go and then covid disrupted that and i had sciatic nerve problem and couldn't go and um so we missed two years in a row yeah. yeah so we're hoping we're healthy and that the world's in a good place and that we get to make it so um very excited about this our current copies available electronically too um they don't do like an electronic um subscription if that's what you're asking they they do the hard copy for the magazine and they can ship it to other countries or mail it to other countries it just i think it's like ten dollars more but, to cover but the copies are available electronically all past, all past yes. copies so yeah, this one will be copies. a past copy yes. uh, next month and it will be on there yes yeah so because that there's a question here from um uh, uh from mari from mari clark are current copies available electronically too so yeah well yeah this one will be on yeah. for electronic yeah, as soon as, as they're well. published physically mm -hmm. they go up electronically so you do have access both ways so. um somebody wants to know is the early bird rate is that um, cost the cost of individual or a couple's cost I'm sure that's individual yeah I'm pretty sure it is too yeah it includes the um, programming it includes um, six whole food plant-based SOS free meals as well yeah, so. and, it, and it, it went up slightly from last year. It was six something last year, and I see now that it's just over 700, but mm -hmm. costs of everything have gone up, yes. unfortunately. So uh, this along with it, but yeah. Yep.
So um, anyway, everyone that we've talked to that has been has said it's like the best conference that they've ever attended. So we're super excited. They have, you know, an amazing um, lineup of speakers and um, we're super excited about that. Also, I wanted to, um, and if you if you subscribe to our newsletter, Tom sent out a newsletter yesterday with all of this information that I'm telling you, um, except for what's coming up. So on October 27th, a week from today, we will have um, Sia from 6D Living on with us, as well as um, several of the people that are doing programs through the 6D Living site and we're super excited about that so you'll want to um, tune in next week on november 2nd which happens to be a wednesday not a thursday we will be doing a um, special live with nick from local spicery just in time for the holidays we're going to be talking all about cinnamon and he's going to talk to us about the different cinnamons that local spicery has how you would know which one to use for what and he's going to do a cooking demo for us but i don't know what it's going to be yet and then the next day on november 3rd we will have faith from faithful plateful she has a beautiful book that is all about feeding children it's a children's cookbook i think you're going to love it she's actually going to be making a stir fry for us i'm super excited about that and it's oil free um, and then on November 10th, we will have Wanda Huberman from the um, National Health Association and the Health Science Magazine, along with Lisa McCarl, who is the plant-based um, travel agent that helps put together all of the NHA plant-based travel. So they're going to come on and they're going to talk about um, what kind of trips they have coming up for the NHA that are plant-based, whole food plant-based, and SOS free. So we have a lot of exciting, exciting things um, coming up. And I think that's all I have for today. Well, we're an hour and a half in, so that's it pretty needs good. to be all You're, you have today. It needs today. to be. There we really are. Really great questions today, you guys. Thank you to um, Jesse and Tiffany for moderating for us. Um, Tiffany says it's the best conference they had ever. A, yeah, they, uh, they had a successful hunt today. Um, they yeah, packed a number of some, trolls. So. We had some trolls today, yeah. didn't we? So, so happy hunting, ladies. Thank you. Yeah, so. so Kim says, yay, a cooking demo with the two of you. So excited to meet both of you. Thank you. We are excited to meet all of you guys as well. Um, so... Uh, and I think we're gonna we're gonna stay an extra day and go tour yeah. Vitamix. He and... slices and he dices, and that's not all. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> You just have to I love to know, cooking demos. Tom the performer will be there. I'm going to put your cooking skills to test, babe. So, well, or I can just grab the microphone and go out and pretend I'm Ryan Seacrest and, and MC the crowd, you know. So, we'll see. No, you're going to be helping me. I'm going to be working yeah. behind the table. Yeah. Wearing an apron. And acting silly because that's what he does. No, I'm very serious. No, you're not. Okay, we got to go. We got to go. Okay. So, yeah, they're talking about the sugar, the the um, cinnamon that tastes like it has um, sugar in it, but it doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. So, Nick will be talking all about that. Okay. So, thanks so much for joining us today, you guys. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe. If you're not um, subscribing to the blog, please go over and subscribe because that's how you found, find out about all that's the things. how you get your things. prompters and... And there is a Vitamix sale. Tom sent out um, a notice about that in yesterday's email. Yeah, did you do? You didn't do a Facebook thing on that. I didn't. There yeah. is a Vitamix. Yeah, they're selling the model of seventy five hundred. It ends at nine o'clock tomorrow morning no, Pacific it's time. Seventy five hundred. It's the model fifty five. <laughs> it's it's in the. You know, uh, you know what? I should sh I should look that I should email up. Look at up. what model is that? I'm going to go to that email. Go and, to that email. What model yeah, is it? Yeah, because we. Um, uh, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba. It it's a 5300 the 5300 the reconditioned model 5300 it's very similar to one that they sell at costco it's actually it's the model that our daughter has and she is very happy with it it does not have the self-detect um 
so the food processor and those things don't work with it if you already have a food processor not a big deal you've been wanting a vitamix it's like a great entry level vitamix to get it has the same base that all the vitamix have it'll do everything that the others will do it just doesn't have the self-detect it ha and it has um the analog knobs instead of um like push i think pad. i found it here i found it i can okay can you put a picture of it up yeah let me make this full screen and so. it comes in either black or red and um a really great entry price of 229 yeah so, um, so if you know someone who would like to have um, an entry level Vitamix, this is a really great price. Um, you still get a warranty with it, even though here's the picture of it. Even though it's been refurbished. Yeah. There you go. And yeah, October twenty first at nine a.m. and it's two hundred and twenty nine dollars, which is like rock bottom for getting into a high speed vitamin blender. Yeah. And our daughter uses hers yeah. all the time. She so, used so, it to make baby food and um, she uses it for smoothies and sauces and all kinds yeah. of things. So if you're watching the replay, there's a good chance this sale is over because today's Thursday and it's tomorrow at 9 a.m. Uh, 12 noon uh, Eastern time, which is 9 a.m. Pacific time. So mm -hmm. anyway, they kind of go noon to noon eastern time on their on their little two and three day flash sales they do so so anyway we just thought we'd let you know just in case anybody's interested in that as well okay okay i'm tammy and i'm tom and we help you get, get healthy, healthy and, and stay, stay healthy, healthy one meal at a time did you thank our moderators i did but thank them again they like to hear it from you thank you ladies thank you for for doing such a great job today we will see you next week bye 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 Oh, I didn't put this. You know what? I am totally failing here. <laughs> you didn't put us I, back on screen? No, I didn't put this thing. I didn't put the sign off screen. Here we go. Oh, I got it. Now we're going to say goodbye.